welcome back to Nightly Nerds. I'm Tote. And I'm Ginger. And we're playing... Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Final Hearts. Mix. Final Mix. Oh, speaking of D&D, &D, so I've got... I'm not, I'm actually now DMing two different sessions with two different groups, mm -hmm. which I don't mind, but... Ah, uh, crap. Ah, crap. I'm actually excited for because I, I really enjoy DMing, but uh, one of the groups is... It's Lucci and, and the Seven Daily Streamer group that I also okay. do stuff with. Yeah. And I am enjoying it. They are so good with role play. Like they just jump right in. Like, oh, just like freaking! I've been I've been super loving my Sunday session because uh, it has been like nonstop role play because like we're currently investigating. And I I said this to you on the way home last yeah. week, but uh, we've been currently investigating a murder or what is it? An attempted assassination on the king of this trade city with like that has like five different districts, and we've been going for. Two months now with no combat at all, and it's been all role play and skill checks, and I've been freaking loving it. So, yeah. So our first session with this other group. I mean, the 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 the, the, the other group, the my main group, I'm still enjoying it. But this other group is just the RP is top notch. Oh yeah. And um, and I've never played with them before, so it's like a, like that first session I was so happy. But first session we didn't fight anything, or they didn't fight anything. Oh, yeah. It was all role play. They're basically investigating a serial killer. And uh, they did such a good job, and they enjoyed it so much. And this week, they just had a couple of minor encounters. Like, literally, one of them was, was, was a druid. She turned into a cat to, to find other animals to see if they had noticed anything that humans hadn't found, which was, like, a really intelligent thing to do. And she got into a fight with some alley cats. <laughs> right? It was just a quick little you know, interaction. But it was just like, I don't know, they did such a good job. A lot of out thinking outside the box, you know? And I really appreciate that as a DM when my... Uh, players think outside the box and come up with things that I didn't even think of. I'm like, oh, that's a really good idea. I'm going to allow that, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like we, we so what is it, in, in one of our in one of our sessions for this investigation, we had to, you know, we, we have to like investigate, talk to the right people, ask the right questions, all that, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, same thing going on here. And uh, so on, on one of them, our uh, me, and, me and my because I play a halfling. Halfling is like my stereotype when I'm playing d and D. I'm always I'm always the short person. And uh, so we, me and the, me and this gnome, you know, being being the short squad, we go and uh, we go and do this investigation. And you know, we're we're not we're asking all the wrong questions, we're not getting the right information. But we got that we got our DM to like give us the right information by doing a the right kind of thing. So we went to one of the bars, and we, you know. He started like per uh, making a deal with the bartenders, like here we'll we'll pay for some drinks here if we want to do a little like a little drinking game. This so we ended up creating a game called Gossiping Goblins, <laughs> in which, you know, there was it, the the scoring system was really weird for this little game, but essentially what it was is like who can tell the best rumor, <laughs> and you know the people will vote on on that rumor and whatnot. So the DM basically you know he he he's like I like this, so he takes it and he starts role playing with it with the. With these different NPCs that start telling rumors back and forth, and then like one of the head honchos of the different districts is like, oh, and then this rumor, and then blah blah blah, and, and reveal the thing you've been trying to investigate. And, we, and he reveals he reveals some important information on the thing we've been trying to find out about. And it was just like, he was just like, I really liked that. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing so far is I've introduced a bunch of different characters and a handful that could be the killer kind of thing. Yeah. And they've taken the bait on all of them. Oh, goodness. But, like, in a good way, you know? And so it's like, oh, I love it. They're, they're playing right into the story. Like, they haven't figured out anything too soon, you know? Yeah. So it's like they're still, they're, like, enjoying the story because they're trying to figure it out. And I don't have to leave like super obvious clues for them. They're able yeah. to find the clues and follow them. And it's just like a good combination. What is a hot anyway? I can't figure it out. Right. So now we got three wishes. All right, for, from the three wishes to the pumpkin head. Nice. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. This will be our uh, our our go-to Keyblade for a while. Everybody scream! Everybody scream! And we're done with Halloween Town. I am the clown with the tearaway face. Here in a flash and gone without a trace. I am the wind when you call who's there. I am, am the, the wind, wind blowing through, through your hair. hair. I am the shadow on the moon at night. night. Fill your dreams to the brim with fright. 
just uh, gone away. <laughs> My magic is good as Donald's now. Woo! No way. Not in a million years. Why don't we go back to Merlin and work on a magic? So it's a hint, hint. We can go, go, we can go to Merlin to practice different spells because we have a bunch of them now. Ah. We're not going there for a while. Because you already know how to use the spells? I, I, no, I mean, like, we're not going here for oh, a while. Oh, wherever that is. That's Atlantica, and I... Ah. I'll do it. I just don't like going to it. What's the name of the girl from Atlanta? Ariel. Oh, wait. I'm thinking of... Never mind. You're thinking of something else? I was thinking of Atlantis. Oh, yeah. Which is you, Milo and uh, what's her name? Like, I don't know. She starts with a K, like Kiora or something like that. I love how fast this is going to be yeah. now. Oh. <laughs> Your ship is super powerful. Well, I've also got like a little booster that charges up that makes this even faster. Yeah, there was like rumor that the Atlantis world was gonna be in Kingdom Hearts three, but then they're like, nah, nah. What, what what's really sad about that is, I actually was never a big fan of the movie itself. It was okay in my opinion, but it's like the only steampunk world they really have. Tre treasure Planet. That's 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 cyberpunk. Yeah, you are correct. You had cyberpunk because it's yeah. Yeah, it's space and lasers and things. Um, it's 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 a punk world, but it's it's oh, I said that loud <laughs> punk world. It's a punk world, but it's a cyberpunk um, <clears throat> dystopian kind of yeah. thing. <clears throat> Excuse me, and it's the only like steampunk world. I mean, there's some steampunk elements yeah. and a few other things, but nothing really. And I was like, it's a pirate ship, but it's just not that very. It's just not a very good movie. Yeah, and it kind of gets left to the wayside. The like, sequel is actually leagues better when like. Are you sure about that? Milo returns. Uh, no, sorry, not the sequel. I think it's the third one where like they dip into Norse. Interesting. They like go to. Um, they like they like find a way to like interact with. Um, I believe the Norse gods. All right, we're on Captain Hook's ship. I didn't think you'd come, Sora. Where we saw Riku with Kyrie's body. Again. Well, where are Donald and Goofy? Are they that important to you? More important than old friends? Nah. Instead of worrying about them, you should be asking about her. <gasps> Kyrie. That's right. While you were off goofing around, I finally found her. Not so fast. No shenanigans aboard my vessel, boy. Riku, why are you siding with the Heartless? The Heartless are baby, baby now, Sora. Now I have nothing to fear. You're stupid. Sooner or later, they'll swallow your heart. Not a chance. My heart's too strong. Riku. I've picked up a few other tricks as well. Like this, for instance. Talk to the hand. No. <laughs> Shadow oh, Shadow Link, huh? Basically. Whoa, what a douche monkey. And keep Sora away from Kyrie. So much inflection in your voice. Such acting, much wow. Well, because originally, you like, tell him, Captain Hook. A lot of the voice actors for Kingdom Hearts 1, or at least the American voice actors, just didn't think it was going to go anywhere. Well, they're probably also young and they're kids or something. I don't know who voices that. Uh, David Gallagher. Who's um, that? I believe he was a uh, Gilmore Girls interest uh, at one point. Either that or Lizzie McGuire, I can't remember. Oh, uh, Lizzie McGuire. I remember when uh, that show was, like, on TV. Yeah. And I was, like, beyond it, which is weird because I think I'm around the same age as... What's her name? Hmm? What is the girl that played Liz McGuire? Uh, Blonde. Right? Hillary Duff. Hillary Duff. I'm about, I think I'm about the same age as she, uh, her. She might be a couple years younger than me. But I was like beyond that. I always was. I was never into that, like those teen shows. For me, it was like, by the time you're a teenager, you're not watching teen shows anymore. Um, I watched I watched it religiously, but it was on... But you're younger than me. It was on... No, no, not, not that one, but I watched uh, on Nickelodeon. It was Ned's Declassified School Survivor Guys. I have no idea what that it's is. It's freaking great. So it's essentially like... A kid in middle school essentially giving you, like, tips on middle school. And some of them were actually, like, legit. Oh. Well, what I was going to say was I had a handful of friends that were, like, hardcore 
into that show and yeah. were in love with her. And I was just like, why? Because to me, it felt because I think she was playing younger than she was. She was. So I, was, I feel like it's like it just felt wrong. Well, that's what Disney did in general. Well, most shows do that. Uh, like mo- most shows with teenagers in high school, the people playing them are in their twenties. Yeah. But I uh, freaking that Ned's Declassified was actually like the show that got me into Everclear because they actually had like the band. They had the lead the singer. <laughs> they had the lead singer show up as a as a guest uh, art or I guess music teacher. Oh, I love Everclear. And so, like, they had like a one whole. Of my groups. They had a whole like musical thing at the end of it with him performing. I, I like, have a handful of groups that, I, like, Everclear. I love Breaking Benjamin. Um. All right, so we're gonna get rid of. But yeah. Goofy, for Peter Pan. Eve Six. Oh yeah. I would swallow my pride. I would take <laughs> on the rind, but lack the rub will leave me on the inside. I would swallow my doubts. But yeah, I love me some Everclear. Turn it inside out, <clears> find nothing, nothing but faith in nothing. nothing. That part always drives me nuts because he rhymes nothing with nothing. <laughs> Hard in a blender. Want to pretend. Watch has been around to, to a beautiful, beautiful oblivion. Rendezvous and I'm through with you. All right. So then we go in here. Beat the... Oh, actually, we don't, we don't have to. I essentially got to get to Captain Hook's room in order to legitimately fight Dark Sora. Ah, Peter Pan. It's it's funny to me as I've grown up, I've become a fan of Hook and less of Peter. Oh, yeah. Isn't that weird? Oh, yeah. Must be a thing. It must be the whole thing about growing up is true. Well, I actually, I, I don't like Disney's Peter Pan. I just don't like Peter Pan, I think, in general. Um, He's a spoiled brat. Really? Because the real Peter Pan's even worse. He like, kills the Lost Boys when they get too old. Oh, I know, but <laughs> it's um, he calls them. There, I can't remember which. There's like a version of Peter Pan that like someone did that I actually really appreciated. Ah. Uh, and Wendy, darling. Aren't the chosen ones? I could care less. You're wasting your time. The heartless have devoured that girl's heart. I'll stake the other hand, it's lost forever. I will find it. (laughs) For as much as he's scared of the croc and doesn't, and because he lost his hand to it, he always bets his other hand on everything. (laughs) The <laughs> whole mush mouth thing, that. like uh, that vaudevillian. Yeah. I wish I could do that better. <laughs> All right. What is it, Tink? Finish up these cuts. Look, scenes. it's Wendy Darling. What are the brothers' names? Jonathan and Michael, or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Use the force, Sora. The bees are with you. The bees are with you. <laughs> are we? I think we're at the end of this episode, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I was just letting the cutscenes play out. Yeah, I'm just I really took the time. I think 15 minutes had gone by or so. Yeah. Because honestly, this world's really short. It's just a bunch of cutscenes. <laughs> All right, everybody, that's going to end this episode of Nightly Nerds. As always, I'm Tote and I'm Ginger, and we'll catch you guys on the flippy flippy. Bye bye. Hey, did you like that video? Well, if you did, click the box on the right for another. Click the box on the left for a playlist. Of course, you could always just subscribe by clicking the link in the middle. Come find us on social media. There are links in the description below. Don't be afraid to leave us a comment. Thanks for watching. I'm Tote. I'm Ginger. See you then. Bye.